Hello, livestock friends, and welcome to this edition of Before the Bid. This is a podcast dedicated to the livestock sales industry where we go behind the scenes of the operation and speak straight to the sellers. We discuss topics about the important aspects of their operation, location, the people behind the prep work, and talk about some of the animals that will be offered to you, the prospective buyers. Hopefully, you've got your sale catalog close by. You might have to go look through that pile on your desk. But if not, then you're probably like me and driving down the road or busy with chores around the farm. And that's okay, too. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you enjoy this segment of Before the Bid. I'm your host, Andy Howe. Welcome, Livestock Friends, to this edition of Before the Bid. And on this podcast, we are going to go to Montana, and we are actually going to talk to three different operations. And I have three people on the phone here on a multi-call, I guess you could call it. And so we're going to talk to all three representatives of their operation. And I love the name of their sale. Their sale is going to be on SC. They're actually going to have two sales on SC. On September 22nd, they're going to have Ladies Under the Big Sky. And on September 24th, they're going to have Boys Under the Big Sky. So these three operations came together, and they have put together two sales. And again, they're going to have the heifers there on the 22nd and the steers on the 24th. And I'm excited to talk to these young people about their livestock and about getting started and having their first sale. They tell me that they've sold some stuff private treaty before, but they decided this time they're going to get together and they're going to have a sale. And so they have put all of these animals together. And I am excited to talk to Isabel Gilliard, Sydney Cutler, and Kyle Glenn. They tell me it's beautiful and it's cool out there in Montana uh, the day that we're recording. So uh, I wish we had that down here. But ladies and Kyle, I want to welcome you to the podcast and appreciate you getting with me and getting this thing put together. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. It's great what you're doing with this. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, again, I am excited about it, and uh, we're going to hear a little bit of their history, and we're going to hear some goals of their operations, and we're going to hear some neat things. We've got a fourth-generation cattle producer on here. We've got a second-generation, and then we've got another fourth-generation cattle producer on. So uh, I am excited to hear about their histories and about those things, about these operations. And So, Sydney, we're going to go to Phillipsburg, Montana, and Sydney, I want you, if you would, give us a little bit of your background and, and how you guys got started and, and how you got where you're at today. As you stated, I am from Phillipsburg, Montana. I grew up on the family cow and calf operation, the Rocking Chair Ranch. We raise Black Angus commercial and a few registered Black Angus. I am fourth generation at this ranch. My great grandpa and grandma bought this ranch in 1952. They started out with some Simmental, Black Angus Simmental, and then eventually went on to start producing Black Angus cattle Mm -hmm. um, with my grandpa Dave. Now, my mom Jody and my uncle Jason, they've made the foundation of our Angus, Angus genetics, what it is today. You know, they've really worked on getting great breed structure, really great cows with longevity, and we've really strived to make sure that those calves are going to come in, pack on the pounds in the fall and be able to, you know, make it in feedlot. And we also raise our own replacement heifers. Mm -hmm. So we really work hard on maintaining those genetics and really look in there and see where we can tweak it, maybe make it a little bit better. We take a lot of pride in our genetics. Mm Mm-hmm. Because we see it every year, you know, when those calves come mm-hmm. come to calf and they come in. So far, we've been a lot of great feedback from our cattle. You know, a goal for me is to keep that philosophy and that that dream going that my that my great grandma and grandpa have started, you know, back in the 1950s, and that my mom and my uncle have founded to what it is today. Mm-hmm. Now, Sydney, do you guys do a lot of AI? Do you do a lot of embryo work? What's your what's your breeding look like? So what we do a lot actually is we typically AI our first to three year calf heifers Mm -hmm. to the same bowl. That way we know exactly what we're getting. Mm -hmm. We can really hit genetics where we need to if we need to tweak something, especially, you know, like calving ease or docility feet. 
milking. Sometimes I have AI'd some of my Black Angus cows to a different bull. But for the most part, for the, the family operation, we just AI our heifers and then we use the cleanup bulls, finish out what we missed. So. Mm-hmm. And you say when you breed, you guys breed all of those cattle to the same bull when you AI? Yes. Oh wow. Okay. So you've got a you've got a whole lot of half sisters running around there and, and kind of helps you know mm-hmm. what it is to, to expect out of those. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, sir. And then we try and buy all of our bulls are half brothers. So we also know mm-hmm. that you know, the heifers that we don't catch on that AI, we're gonna know exactly what calf we're getting on that second cycle. Oh wow. That's interesting breeding philosophy. That's great. Yeah, we really take pride in it. Mm-hmm. So are we talking a lot of cows there on the ranch? Yes, I forgot to mention we are currently running around 500 to 600 head of Black Angus cattle. Okay, okay. And keeping most of those, uh, as you said, they're, they are all purebred and, and straight Angus bred cattle? Yep. Wow, well that's neat. Where do you guys go to buy bulls? In the past, we've gone to KG. That's been one of our big ones. Mm -hmm. We go all around Montana, though, to get our bulls. Okay. Again, we try and go to a sale where we can get all half-brothers to to clean up with. So. Okay. Well, that's neat. A lot different than than my country. So uh, I I really uh, get interested in a lot of that, and and especially breeding the whole bunch of them to one bull. It's uh, that's really neat. So. Thank you. You plan to, to carry that on in the future here and, and just keep going with the Angus and running that way? I do, yes. I want to keep those block Angus genetics going and, you know, improve on little things and tweak it a little bit if we need to. And I also love the Simmental cattle too, especially the Simmental Angus cross cows. Mm-hmm. Maybe someday incorporate a little bit of that on the side without bringing down what we have for our black angus because we've we've really really done a good job there. Mm-hmm. But I love my cemental, so <laughs> one day, one day I hopefully get there. So one of those uh, renegades, right? In the right. family. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You got to walk on on eggshells there. I'm I'm gonna guess got to walk on eggshells around mom and uncle there to kind of influence that. <laughs> Simmental into those Angus, right? Right, right. Um, yeah, they, especially on all those beautiful black baldies, they don't quite fit in with the, the purebred solid black Angus, you know. So, right, right. yeah, and, and those buyers, they really like the, the big numbers and the uniformity. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I hear about it. Yeah, I would say uniformity by, by breeding that close time. That's, that's great. Yes, sir. Isabel Gilliard is from Stevensville, Montana. And Izzy, you had an interesting night tonight, right? I did. I brought yet another heifer. All right. And it was one that came off of a previous podcast that we did. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, they do great stuff. I'm excited to see where she takes me. Right. Yeah. She came from the Bonnell operation. And so the, the Bonnell, that, and that's kind of interesting. We're talking, we're clear out in Stevensonville, Montana, and, and that heifer is going to come from about an uh, hour and a half north of me out here in Indiana. So I think that's really neat. So yeah. And, and I remember Michael talking about uh, Izzy and, and about how he sent some really nice heifers out there and she's done really well with them. And I was excited to get her on the phone and get her on the podcast as well. So uh, Izzy, tell us a, a little bit about what you guys do out there. So as you said, we're located down in Stevensville, Montana. My dad manages a ranch down here. I started 4-H in 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, I started out with the lambs. And my second year in, my grandpa found me a short horn cow-calf pair. And that really got me going into the short horns. And from there on, I fell in love with the breed and just dove headfirst into the heifers and the breeding. Mm-hmm. In 2016, I bought my first short horn from Bonnell Cattle Company, and they've really kind of been the foundation for my breeding program. And I continued to buy now five heifers I've got from them, mm-hmm. and they've done great things for me. From there, I was also a Nile Merit Heifer recipient. Mm-hmm. So the Nile Every Year awards 20 people. A heifer, you have a donor, you raise the calf up for a year and then show her at the Nile in October. Mm-hmm. And my donor was Circle L Angus down in Wise River. So that got me going on the Angus 
she did really well for me. She actually won the show. Awesome. And she's been producing heifer calves that have been doing good things for me. They've been going to be replacements. And this is actually the first heifer calf I'm selling this year. She's got lot 10 heifers. Mm-hmm. But when you look at the herd, I think there's some diversity, but a lot of the cows can tend to be um, like a little bit of a type. I like big, I like broody, and I like functional cattle. We like them good on their feet and legs. We want them to be successful in the show ring or whatever path they take and be able to be good quality cows. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Really been taken off with that. Well, that's great. Now, do you guys uh, do a lot of AI? Do you do a lot of embryo work? What's your What's your breeding look like? So we have been doing a lot of AIing. Um, I actually went to AI school this March. Mm -hmm. So we've been AIing pretty much since I got going with it. This year, I actually used one of the bulls that I got out of one of my Bonnell females. She had a nice hot commodity bull calf last year, and so he was my cleanup bull for this year. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited to see what he produces for me next year. Mm -hmm. That's great, yeah. So how many cows did you get to AI since you went to AI school? How many have you AI'd from, from then till now? I AI'd 14 this year. Okay, well, that's good. Did you get more comfortable then as you went along? Yeah, it definitely got easier. I got more comfortable with it, and I'm excited to keep on trucking with it. Mm -hmm. Now, do you and your dad, do you guys have a, a lot of cattle around there, or does he manage the other one and, and you guys just keep a few there of your own? My dad manages 61 Bar Ranch down here, and then we just keep a little bit of our own around here as well. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. And you have sold a few before this year, correct? Yep. I sold two heifers last year, so they showed this year, and um, they did pretty well. Some went up about an hour away from me, and the other one actually showed at our local county fair. Mm-hmm. Okay. And successful? Yeah, they're going out and doing good things for the girls that bottom that's good is he anything else we need to know about the history or breeding philosophy there at your place i don't think so i think that pretty much covers it okay well we will move on to missoula montana and kyle glenn is down there kyle you're a fourth generation cattle producer and uh, if you would give us a little bit of history there and and how you got started and and kind of where you're at now well, growing up, my grandpa has always raised, you know, a couple of had a commercial head cattle. Mm -hmm. But in 2016, I went and bought my first club heifer, and that kind of got me started into the club calf program. So I started raising a little bit of club calves, sold them, you know, locally, you know, just one or two every year because that's all I really had. And then once I graduated high school, I kind of, you know, decided this is what I'm going to do. So I went on SC Online Sales, bought a couple of heifers, and they've kind of really started to take me off in my club calf program. Mm -hmm. But recently, just this year, we've actually decided to kind of switch our program up and go more towards Simmental and trying to get more of those broody, big belly, you know, really good footed females. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we're headed now. We'll always, I mean, do a couple of club calves every year just because club calves steers are what's winning and stuff like that. So we'll always do a couple of club calves, but we're kind of mostly focused on trying to get those really good replacement heifers out for people and some really good show heifers in that Simmental area. Mm hmm Okay. Now, are you guys AIing? Are you using using embryo work? What are you guys doing? Uh, so I went to the same AI school as well went just in 2018. So I've been doing all the AI work with that. And then I'm planning on going to embryology school. I've got two really good females that have been doing tremendous things for us. So I really want to flush them and get some embryos on them and put them in some of our commercial Angus cows that'll wean off 900-pound calves just to kind of get those really good replacement cows maybe that those commercial Angus cows can't produce in that higher quality. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Kyle, you're a fourth generation, correct? Yep. So my great-grandpa ranched up in Charlo, Montana. My grandpa kind of moved from Charlo around the state of Montana, and then he finally settled down here in Missoula, which is actually great because they're 20 feet away from us. Um, and then when he passed away in 2017, my dad kind of took it over, and then I'm kind of, you know, slowly starting to take it over now. Okay. Now, big operation? We're not huge. All of my family works full-time jobs. Okay. So we're running about 25, 30 head right now. Okay. 
Okay. And then you look to expand that to a lot larger. You have big dreams for that? Yeah, my hope is to, you know, run and kind of do what Sydney does and do two, three hundred head of cattle and always do those, you know, a couple of clubbies here and there, mm-hmm. but mostly just Simmentals. Mm-hmm. Right. It sounds like you all like a little bit of something different than the norm, right? Right. <laughs> well, I got a little girl the same way. So uh, uh, we got a lot of the Angus cattle around here, but she likes a little something different uh, every once in a while. So uh, so that's that's neat that you guys like that and and like to uh, have that diversity there in your in your operation. So I think that's uh, I think that's really neat. And uh, you guys sound like you have some some really good goals and, and big goals. And you know I probably should have asked this earlier before we even jumped on, but I'm going to be rude maybe and and ask how old are you guys? Sydney? I am 21. Okay, Izzy? I'm 19. Okay, and Kyle? I'm 22. Oh, wow. Okay, so I've got a bunch of young guns on here, and so uh, I, I think that it's exciting for you guys, and it sounds like you guys have got a really good start. Uh, I think that's great. So, again, we've got three operations here, and, and they're going to have two sales. Uh, one, again, is on the 22nd, and, uh, again, I love the name of this, Ladies Under the Big Sky, and also they have the Boys Under the Big Sky on the 24th. And, guys, these cattle are not all located in one area they are all at your respective places correct correct okay well Sydney give us a a little bit of an idea where Phillipsburg Montana might be all right so where Kyle's from Missoula I am right in between Missoula and Butte a little bit closer to Butte but not much closer than Missoula I'm southwest Montana okay okay yeah Izzy, where where would we tell people Stevensonville is? So we're over, you know, in the western Montana. Um, we're about two hours away from Phillipsburg, about an hour away from Missoula. We're seven hours away from Billings, which is probably one of the bigger places in Montana. So we're about eight hours away from Billings. Okay. Okay. So yeah, everybody thinks, oh, I'll go to Billings and I'll and I'll get there, but they got a little bit farther to go, huh? A rat. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, where where might we tell everybody Missoula is at? Missoula is about an hour and a half from the Idaho border as you're heading towards Washington. I'm kind of in the perfect spot between everyone. It's about an hour each way to Sydney or Isabel's. Okay. And Sydney, you and Isabel are, are about how far apart then? About two hours. If you drive like me, though, about an hour and a half. So. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys have speed limits out there during the day yeah okay but <laughs> okay. Oh, but it, you know that's just a suggestion right uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> i know drivers like that you're one of those that tries to beat the uh, uh tries to beat the gps time right yeah maybe a little <laughs> bit <laughs> I think there's quite a few of us out there. So uh, (laughs) where can we find out uh, a little bit more maybe about your operation, maybe about some of the cattle that are in here, maybe see some of the dams that are of these cattle here in this sale. Uh, Where can we find some of that information? Do you guys have Facebook pages? Do you have, I know you guys are young, so I'm, I'm showing my age here with the Facebook page. Uh, but but you guys have Instagrams or anything like that. How can we find out some more information about Sydney? I'm on both Facebook and Instagram. Okay. I try to post all of my information on both portals there. Okay. Um, I have two Instagram pages. I have my uh, Wagon Ranch Cattle Company Instagram. That's where, I mean, if you want to know about my cows, that's the best place to look. Okay. You know, I post all like all pictures I can during calving season. I love to see see those babies when they first come out, especially those big fluffy babies. But usually, I'll post sire and dam information. Okay. A lot of times on Facebook, it's just under Sydney Cutler. I'll put stories on there about my calves. I'm pretty good about Messenger too. Yeah. So if anybody needs to ever contact me about my calves, Messenger is probably probably your bet. Okay. Well, that sounds great. Well, where can we find Isabel Gilliard? So I'm also both on Facebook and Instagram. 
Okay. Uh, the Facebook is Gilliard Club Lambs and Cattle. I'm pretty good about posting stuff on there. And then my Instagram is Gilliard Showstop. I'm probably a little bit better at keeping people up to date on my Instagram. I answer text messages and private messages pretty quickly, or at least as fast as I can. So okay. that's probably your best bet. Okay. Kyle, the same? Uh, yeah, so we're also on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, both of them are Glen Cattle Company. Instagram is more update with uh, dams and sires and due dates and calf pictures and stuff like that, just because that's been running longer. But the Facebook just started, so we're working on that and getting that all up to date and getting pictures of calves and sires and all that kind of stuff. Okay. All you young people on the gram, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, and I'm going to guess everybody can be found on Snap as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We can. That seems to be the other new thing. Okay. Well, guys, let's go into these girls under the big sky here. And again, that girls under the big sky, it is on SC. It is currently posted. So if you are listening to this and, and you want to go look at these cattle on SC, if you're watching the podcast video, either uh, on, from our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, either one, why you can just uh, keep right on going and, and we'll show you the pictures and videos of these cattle as they guys talk about them. Uh, so that's just a, another other place that you can find them and watch these uh, animals as they talk about them. Uh, we're going to start with the ladies again here on the 22nd, and uh, we're going to start with Isabel. She's going to talk about this Lot 1 Angus heifer. Yeah, so this is by far my favorite heifer. She's probably one of the best ones we've had. She is a Circle L Gus daughter. Uh, she's a pretty famous bull down here in Montana. Her dam, Forever Stunner, is one of my Merit Heifer's daughters. They've been producing good for me. I think she's going to do really well. She's definitely going to stand off and then go on and be a really good cow. She's attractive on the profile. I like her rib shape. She's sound. I just think she's going to do a lot of really good things wherever she's headed. And I will register her uh, upon request. Okay. Uh, yeah, and she's, she's tagged 901 if, uh, if you're looking at that. But, yeah, she is lot one and yeah what a nice big bold nice female so the lot two we're gonna go uh we're gonna go to kyle and he's gonna talk about this crossbred female so her tech number is 41-1 she's a safe and sound on a dakota gold eye candy cow uh the cow sticks out like a sore thumb because she looks like a holstein she's black and white and all painted up but this heifer is super super cool she's big bellied sound footed She's going to be tall. She's the end of January calf. I think she's a January 28th or 29th, right in there. But, I mean, she's going to be your growthy female. If you're looking to make like, some really good replacement effort calves, she's the one that's going to do it for you. She's shown a rib shape to her. She's decent out of her front end. If I hadn't already bought three calves this year, she would definitely be going into the replacement pen. Right. And I wouldn't blame you a bit. She does. She has that cowy look to her. So, admire her a lot. The lot three, we're going to go to Sydney, and uh, she's going to tell us about this one that's down there in Phillipsburg, Montana. So lot three, tag number red, 800. This girl is a registered maintainer. She is out of red 800, whom I had shown in 2019. Her dam is a black Angus slash main. That she was a commercial blue roan female. She was one that I did very well across the state in all kind of in jackpot shows and then at fair, of course. This female was born on May 1st. She is extremely, you know, extended up front. She's long bodied. She's big and broody in her hip. Um, she's got great feet. She's one that I feel she's going to do really well for you in the show ring. But at the end of the day, I feel like if you turn her out in the future, she's going to make you some really nice deers and heifer calves. Mm -hmm. How cool is that, that you raise one that, that that's that good out of one of your past show animals? Yes, it's a great feeling. Now, and I have a question, and this doesn't have anything to do with the heifer or the cattle, but uh, in your video, you've got that flag in the background. Was that put there purposely, or is it always there? That was put there purposely. Yep, that was put there purposely. <laughs> okay. Yep. I, I noticed that while watching that video. Uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, I think, Thank you. I think Thank that's you. awesome. Uh, the lot four here on the females, uh, we got a crossbred female, and Isabel is going to talk about that one. 
Yeah, so this lot for tag 814 heifer, I've actually got a lot of people like this one. I think she does a lot of things right. She's going to be a big cow, um, that's for sure. And I think she's a she's really attractive on the profile, bold in her rib, lots of capacity. She's definitely going to be able to go in the ring and strut her stuff and be able to be put to work. Her dam's a shower composite that my sister showed last year. She's done a lot of good things for the herd. And then our sire, Carlson Bravo, he is a Coleman Bravo son that we used as our cleanup bull this year. And I think he's done a lot of really good things with our calves this year. You've got this heifer ready to go. Oh yeah, she's ready. <laughs> she, is, she is flat, ready to go. And, and this is not a put down at all. You can tell she hasn't missed any feedings and uh, you're, you've got her ready to roll. Oh, absolutely not. None of them miss the feeding. <laughs> right. And you can see that about her. She is uh, she is really neat. And like you said, big, bold, sprung, uh, nice female. I, I enjoy her. So we're going to go to lot five. We've got a In God We Trust, and Kyle has this one. Yep. So her tag number is 36-1. She's a In God We Trust on a commercial Angus cow. I mean, she is a powerhouse. If you're looking to make steers, she's going to be the one that's going to do it for you. She's got the extra hip, extra rib. But the thing that I love about her the most is she's got that extra set to her hawk. You can kick her out in the mountains, and she'll perform for you, even if, even though she's that extra powerhouse. Yeah, she is. Watching her video right now, she is a powerhouse. But you talk about that set to the hawk. Don't be afraid because she's not got too much set, uh, for me anyway, uh, I wouldn't think. And, and I absolutely agree. Turn her out, uh, make her a cow, and uh, just watch out, right? Yep. She is She is really neat, smoky colored deal. Uh, that's, a, that's a good one. That's a nice female right there. The lot six, uh, we've got a Sim Angus female there, and, and she belongs to Sydney. Yes, sir. Lot six is tag number 854. She is a commercial Sim Angus. She's born on April 16th. This heifer, she's out of one of my favorite cow families that we have on the ranch, the matriarch 854. This cow, 854, has several, you know, replacement heifers on the ranch that, you know, they come in every fall um just gigantic calves and you know what you're going to get out of these cows i feel that this 269 heifer she's going to give you the same the same progeny she is out of our herd sire hc cowboy up 8173 whom i love a lot of these calves that i have in the sale are out of this bull he obviously he's got longevity and consistency and he's really i feel like passed that on to her so if you want consistency in your herd, she's your girl. Mm -hmm. And big, bold, sprung female. And you've got her ready to go. Yes, sir. Like that little blaze face on her as well. She's really cool. Thank you. The lot seven. Uh, we're going to go back to Stevensville, and Izzy has this one. So this tag 811, her dam, Bonnell Fuels commodity, she's done a lot of really good things for me. She was the reserve and open champion at the 2018 Nile. She's gone on a produce credit replacement, um, one that's actually going to the Nile this year in October. I think her calf this year is pretty nice. I like her length of body, uh, her neck extension. I think she's going to be a little bit more moderate frame, but she's good on her feet and legs, and I think she's going to definitely do some good with a little bit of TLC. Mm -hmm. Now, Michael talked about this female on the uh, on the podcast uh, last week or, or whenever it is that, that I talked to him, uh, depending on when you're listening to this. So this female has done you a lot of good. Yeah, she's a good one to have and produced in me a lot of good calves, and I'm excited to where she keeps on taking me. Mm -hmm. And no exception here. Uh, on this one. Uh, what a nice female there in the lot seven. We're going to go to the lot eight there and we're going to talk about a maintainer female and we're going to Missoula. Yep. So her tag is 49 1. She's a simplify on a border patrol cow. She is out of a first calf heifer, so she's a nickel more greener, but she's got that extra neck to her. I think with time and feet, she's going to be just like her mama. She's going to be big belly, sound footed. I mean, just a wicked cool calf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is a high quality black female there. And Kyle, it looks like you guys got a lot of things going on around there uh, when you look at the videos here. Yeah, so we did a first round of videos, but we did it 
at 7 in the morning, so mm-hmm. the lighting was really bad. So mm-hmm. the pictures and videos came out real fuzzy. Mm-hmm. So then we retook pictures and videos at like 5 in the afternoon one day, and it was the same day that we were trying to get videos and everything done. Uh-huh. So it's kind of like a last-minute thing. Okay. Well, that sounds great. And you got them. You got them done, and, and they look good. So we're going to go back to the lot 9, and Sydney at Phillipsburg, Montana is going to talk about this one. Lot 9, 269. She's a cow family of 854. She takes after her grand dam as well as her dam, whom I took to the Tri-County Fair in 2013 mm-hmm. as one of my projects. That cow today still is super, super quiet, super calm. She's a big cow. She has killer steers when she does have steers this year. She gave me a heifer, but she's just like her mama. Um, She's got all the perfect pieces to make a good cow. Super broody, super great on the profile. I feel this heifer, she, you know, she's a commercial Simangus. Can't be shown in a Simmental breed show, but you can show her in the AOB show, take her to state and do really well. Mm -hmm. One thing I like about this female, when she settles down in tracks, she can just flat put that back foot where the front foot leaves, can't she? Yes. Right. She's got longevity, in my opinion written all over her so another nice blaze face commercial female there uh the lot 10 we've got an angus and izzy's got this one yep so this 157e her dam is my nile mare after i got from circle l angus again we got the carlson bravo but that circle l female uh she's just she's a powerhouse and i have no doubt her calf this year's gonna be just as much of a powerhouse she's a big calf she's going to be a huge broody female she's feminine she follows her tracks well i think she's going to do a lot of really good things for wherever someone takes her Mm -hmm. back to that nile female right yep always comes back to the nile isn't that so cool uh that that they did that they did that program and and you've got some really good progeny out of her yeah they've been doing the program for years so it's a good program. I just think that's awesome. The lot 11, uh, Kyle's got this one. So her tech number is 72-1. She's a simplify on a limb flex cow. Uh, this is the one that my dad did not want to put in the sale whatsoever. She's out of a first calf heifer. Uh, we kept the cow back as a replacement. She's out of a Coleman limousine bull up in Charlotte, Montana. Mm-hmm. The cow is just super huge, bellied, super sound, wicked cool. Um, but I finally talked him into it, and <laughs> she's big bellied. She's got extra rib. She's not the cleanest out of her front end, but that's because she's a quarter limousine. Mm-hmm. She can be papered as a maintainer, 50%. But, I mean, she's one that I would not be upset if she did not sell. She would be a good replacement for anyone. How fun is that to, uh, I guess, disagree with Dad on which ones to sell and which ones not to? Right. I was kind of upset when he chose to keep the heifer because I wanted her. (laughs) I have to have those discussions with my dad, too, about some that we maybe (laughs) should move on and some that maybe we ought to keep. So those are always neat. Sydney, go with a lot 12. All right. 633 is a commercial Sam Angus. She is my youngest calf in this sale. She's a May 1st born calf. She's pretty green as she is right now as she's pictured and videoed. Um, I will say though from the time we've done those she's grown quite a bit. She's got a great front on her. She's got a very long rib, very long back. She's got a great flank on her. Her feet are great. This calf also does go back to 854 the matriarch. This calf, she's going to explode as you continue to feed her. This calf also has a great disposition for a younger person. Well, that's great. And again, she gets out like the other one that we talked about. She can flat track and and get across that ground quite well. We're going to the tag 13, Sydney. That one's yours as well here to round out the heifer lots. Purple 510 is a registered Simmental. This gal has been one of my favorites since she hit the ground this winter. She has a calving date of uh, April 1st. She is out of Miss Yardley, who I bought in 2013 to start my Simmental program. This cow produces phenomenal heifers every year. She's never had a steer, but those heifers come in from the fall and they're just, they're amazing. 
They're big, they're broody, they're really cool to look at, they're clean fronted, they've got great feet. This heifer, she's going to do well in the show ring, but she's going to make you some nice calves, hopefully some really nice heifers. Also great disposition on this girl. One thing I like about the video of this one, you, you show her going away from you. Uh, most people don't. Uh, most people don't do that, and and she did in this video, and and this heifer's walking away. And man, you want to talk about some base width that this thing has? Yeah, you look at her from behind, and she's got a big wide back on her. She's got great bone. She's gonna be a bigger cow, but she's not gonna give up on her flex and her movement by any means. Right. Guys, if you're not following along and you're just listening and you go to SC, don't just stop there at the first couple. Make sure you make it all the way down the page to see this one because uh, she's sure worth the scroll. And uh, what a nice set of heifers you guys have put together here for the ladies under the big sky. And again, that's going to be on September 22nd there on SC. Uh, let's move over to talk about the boys here, the boys under the big sky. And that one's going to be on September 24th on SC online sales. And so, uh, Izzy, you got a white steer here to start this thing off with. I do. Chai 82. Do not let the fact that he's white scare you away. <laughs> <laughs> just need a little elbow grease, right? Yeah. Yeah. You just need a little bit of purple shampoo and he'll be just fine. I think this calf is really, really cool. He does a lot. He comes packed with a huge hip, carries his muscle down through his leg. He's smooth through that shoulder, pretty clean fronted, got some depth of body to follow. Um, I think he's going to do a lot of really good things for some kids, and I think he's going to hang some banners for him as well. He's also a puppy dog tank, so I mean, if you've got a little eight-year-old, then he'd be do just fine with him. Did you surgically remove his legs and implant tree trunks on this thing, or what? Nope, he came out like that. Holy cow, that's a big bone son of a gun right there. He is really cool, and, and the white color to boot, uh, that's a good one. Yeah, he's definitely going to stand out. Yes, he will. We're going to go to Sydney for the lot two steer here. All right. Uh, Purple 269 is out of Penelope E269, who I showed in the Junior Simmental show at Nile. And at the state fair, she won the state fair Simmental division and did very well throughout, you know, the jackpot shows in Montana. Mm -hmm. This heifer also does go back to 854, the dam to this, this steer, mm -hmm. um, super quiet. And he is just as quiet as, as his mother. He would be great for a, a younger person. This steer, you know, he's got great muscle definition. He's got a great rib on him. He's super long bodied. If you look at him from behind, he's got big old wide hips on him. He's got big bone, great feet. Um, again, this steer is going to be a really good steer for a young person. He was the first one that I hold broke. That's always cool. Yeah. And just a, just a real nice, uh, real nice complete steer. Yes, sir. So, yeah. And they all go back. Most of all yours go back to this one cow, huh? Yeah, yeah, she's a pretty cool gal. She's 13 now, and she's got a lot of progeny on the ranch, so we love her. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, that's yeah. awesome, and, and still having good ones like this at, at uh, 13, right? Yes. All right, well, that's cool. Kyle, he's got the next steer here, and uh, it's the tag 42-1, the lot three steer. Yep, so he's a simplify on a men amongst boys rainmaker cow. He's out of my foundation clubby female. He is able to be registered as a maintainer, 50%. Um, he's going to be moderate sized. His brother was the reserve champion miniature steer at the Western Montana Fair. He was 45 inches tall, so I believe this steer is going to be taller, but he's still going to be more moderate sized. He's only going to finish out at probably 1,100 pounds, but he's dog gentle. I mean, he's perfect for a very first time showman, an eight year old. Just sweet as can be, but he's still really cool. He's massive hip, huge tops, that extra rib to him. I mean, he's perfect for a first-time kid to start off with. Well, that's great. Yeah, and everybody needs that uh, first great project to start out with, right? Right. Izzy, we're back to you on this crossbred steer, the Lot 4. All right, so this tag 801 Lot for his dam, Melina E.T. is a Shorthorn Plus. Uh, she is a Monopoly daughter. And then we come back to that Carlson Bravo as a sire. 
I really like this steer. I think he's a lot like the lot one, maybe not as massive, but I still really like how clean he is up through that front end. He's got a ton of rib shape. He's massive when you look at him from behind. He's got some bone under him. I think he's got a lot of potential with the right feed. Mm -hmm. Again, a really nice, complete kind of a steer right there in the in the crossbred steer. The lot five, Sydney, we're going to talk about a main steer here. Red 646 is out of one of my favorite show heifers I've ever had, ICC Smoke and Roan. Yes, she's a Roan. I showed her, and again, we did well. Ended up getting reserve at the Niles Fox show. Um, this is one that I would love to do embryos out of and just breed, breeder, breeder, mm-hmm. breeder, breeder, because she has phenomenal steers. This cow has great flexion, and she definitely gave that up to her steer here that is in the sale. This roan steer, he's got a great hip on him, got great feet. He's also got a really well extended rib on him. He's super quiet, as most of these cattle are in this sale. I tell you what, though, if I was going to show a calf in 4-H, Still, if I was 4-H age, this mm-hmm. would be my steer. He'd probably be taken to 4-H. Um, I'd be taking him to jackpots, and he would do very well. Mm-hmm. I have uh, big ideas about this steer. Mm-hmm. And you've got him ready to go as well. He looks like he's been fed well and he's got some size to him, and he's he's <laughs> not green. He's ready to go. Yep, no problems on eating for this one. Right. So, uh, make sure you make sure you check him out there. We've got a Shorthorn Plus steer that uh, Izzy's going to talk about here. Yes, so this Tire 24 steer, Sam's Bonnell Lila, came from Bonnell Cattle Company. Um, so we've kind of discussed she was a division champion at the Nile in 2017 and then got that Carlson Bravo once again. This steer, he's really complete, and every time I go out there and look at him, I like him more and more. I really like the way he tracks. He's deep bodied. He's got a ton of rib shape. He's definitely going to be a bigger steer. Um, probably finish out 1450 would be my guess. He is a little heady, so I would not recommend him for an ex- an experienced showman. Just to put that out there. But I really like this steer. Mm-hmm. This Bravo Bull's really uh, doing well for you guys. Yeah, he is for sure. I'd be uh, I'd be really proud of him and and proud of those calves. Uh, we got another Bravo here with the uh, Shorthorn Plus steer for the lot seven to round out the boys under the big sky here. Is he? Yep. So this 2.0 tagged calf. His dam is actually a daughter of the Tag 24 mom. She's she's a first calver, so he is a little bit greener. But I definitely think with a little bit of grain, he's gonna. Do really well. Um, I like him in terms of his top line. I think he's going to drop in that flank, and every time I go out there, I swear his hip's bigger. Mm. He's developing really well since these pictures were taken, and I'm excited about him. Now, I have a totally off-the-wall question uh, that doesn't pertain to him as much, except for his tag. How does he get a tag 2.0? So, his... <laughs> um, <laughs> His damn mother, Bono Lila, of that Tag 24, she's a little uh, bug-eyed. And so we called her daughter, which is IEG's guardian angel, angel Crazy 2.0. Okay. We got the 2.0 for the tag number. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I've heard a lot of tag numbers and been over a lot of tag numbers and tagged a lot of cattle. But that made me curious as to how he got a 2.0. So, uh... I think that's really cool. Uh, really yep. neat. Sometimes you got to have those little things that just kind of set them apart, and maybe only you understand the the laugh behind it, right? Oh yeah, it's, <laughs> it's definitely a good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really neat. Well, uh, guys, I sure appreciate uh, you taking us through these cattle, and and want to encourage everybody to get a hold of uh, these young people and go look at these cattle if you can. Take a day and and see these different operations. And, again, they are at the three different operations there. Uh, again, at Phillipsburg, Montana, Stevensonville, Montana, and Missoula, Montana. So you're going to have to go around to, to see those. But I'm going to guess that's very pretty country between you guys and, and a nice drive that uh, if, you, if you need to get out of maybe a day job or something like that and you need to go see some big country, I'm going to guess that that's what they're going to see going between you guys' operations. Would I be right on that? Yes, sir. 
<laughs> I know some of us could use that uh, every once in a while. I know my dad talks about that. He says, I just want to get out there and drive and see some big country. So I may have to send him out there to go look at those. So, But, guys, I appreciate it very much. I guess I, I, we ought to tell them a little bit about pickup on these cattle and, and what they need to do, especially if they buy them from the different operations, if they get more than one of them. What's kind of the outlook on that, and, and what should we advise those guys on? And Sydney, I guess we'll, we'll kind of start with you and, and let you run with that. All right. So between the three of us, we have all agreed to leave shipping to the buyer. Okay. Of course, all of our cattle are at our own place right now. Mm -hmm. They're not all, you know, in one place. Mm -hmm. All of mine are here. All of Kyle's are in Missoula. All of Mm -hmm. Izzy's are in Stevensville. But as far as shipping, we are leaving that up to our buyers. You know, I can meet people in Missoula, in Butte, um, local about that as it comes. Mm-hmm. Okay. But right now, I guess that's kind of what our our idea is. Okay. So. Well, that sounds good. I just wanted uh, wanted to give you a chance for for everybody to to know uh, kind of what you guys were thinking on that. So, uh, yeah, what a what a neat thing to for you guys to get together and and put these cattle together. And I guess I got another question, and I probably should ask it the first. How did you guys? all get together and and decide this have you guys been on the road together and and shown together or or how did this come about yeah we've all been friends for a while Uh, i've known kyle for seven years we've been shown together and then i've known sydney we've just recently gotten closer but i mean i've known of her for the last four or so years okay and then we've been saying for years like we need to do a sale we need to do a sale we need to do a sale and finally we did a sale well that's awesome yeah, and as young as you guys are, and stepping out there and, and doing a sale, uh, I just think it's I think it's great. So I, I don't know that that I told you guys this, but but uh, I'm an agriculture science and business teacher by day, and so so seeing young people that that really just grab a hold of this thing and and want to do well and and want to do their own thing and step out and and do a big thing like have a sale, I just I just think that's awesome. Just really think that's something that's pretty cool. Thank you. Well, guys, anything else that we might want to tell these guys as they're listening or, or watching here on the podcast video about this sale, about these cattle, anything that, that uh, maybe we need to let them know here uh, as we wrap up? I think I can speak for my fellow consigners here. Um, we love helping out the kids. Mm-hmm. We love 4-H and FFA and that part of our life, getting older, and we can't can't really do that anymore. For me, I really would love to help anybody buys from our sale. I love helping out youth. I wanna I wanna give back to the cause. Feel free to contact me anytime for questions or help. Okay. Well, I think that's great. And yeah, you guys mentioned that uh, the other night when we were talking that it's it's kind of a, a way to give back and help young people and and help them learn what you guys have learned uh, up through your years. Am I correct in that? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I think that's great. Well, Sydney, Izzy, Kyle, uh, sure appreciate your time for this one. Sure appreciate you getting it together. And again, we've got uh, one of these four-way calls, I guess you could call it. Uh, i got three people on the other end. And so as recording goes, this is the second one I've done in two days with, with this, and I'd never done one before. So uh, I think that's a great thing, and you guys were awesome, and, and I sure appreciate it. So I uh, want to thank you guys again. Talk to Sydney and see her cattle in Phillipsburg, Montana. See Izzy's in Stevensville, Montana. And also go see Kyle's there in Missoula, Montana. And make sure you catch their sale there. The ladies under the big sky on September 22nd and the boys under the big sky on September 24th. And again, I just appreciate you getting this thing put together. And and we want to thank you guys for listening to another edition of Before the Bid Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Before the Bid. For more information and to learn more about upcoming podcasts and sales, visit us at beforethebid.podbeam.com or Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram pages. For information on being a guest on Before the Bid, please email us at beforethebid at gmail.com or one of our social media pages. Remember, that's beforethebid at gmail.com. Happy sales to you, and we will talk to you next time on before the bid.